Which you guys, today we're taking a look at the Geekom GT series. This is the Geekom GT1 Mega, and this has an Ultra 9 processor in it, which means it's going to be super powerful. Geekom sent this out for review. All opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released, and it's not a sponsored video. So let's get on with the video. Inside the box, you're going to get a VESA mount here, some screws. These are for the VESA mount, so you can mount it. Also, you're going to get your user guide and warranty cards here. Going to get your cable. This has got a UK plug on it, but yours will have a plug of your country. HDMI cable and the power adapter itself with a barrel jack on the end of it. This is a 19 volt, 6.32 amps and also 120 watts. So a pretty small, lightweight uh, mini PC here with a very small power adapter. And then you've got the mini PC itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is it right here. So we'll start off with the front of the actual mini PC itself. On the front, we do have four USB type A ports. These are 3.2 Gen 2 uh, ports on the front. We also have that audio 3.5 millimeter audio jack there and the power button itself. So you've got plenty of room to plug in your devices on the front of the actual mini PC if you need to. Let's take a look at the sides of the mini PC. On this side, we're gonna have an SD slot 4.0 on here with some ventilation. And on the other side, we have our Kinston lock on here as well with some more ventilation there. Let's move on to the back. Now on the back, we do have that power input there. So up the top, we do have that expansion area here to allow air to be pumped out from the GPU. Also, we do have two HDMI 2.0 ports on here, two USB 4.0 ports. So these also can be used for monitors. So you can have multiple monitor support on here. We have two Ethernet ports. They are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on here as well, and two USB Type-A ports. One of them's USB 2.0, and the other one is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port on there as well. So that is on the back of the actual unit, packed with plenty of ports. So let's go ahead and remove the bottom. You can see the bottom is just made of plastic here. We have four anti-slip rubber feet here that need to be removed if you want to gain access to inside. Let me pop this off here and we can gain access to the inside of it. So the bottom part just unscrews with four screws and that will gain access to the inside. You can also see the VESA mount screw holes there ready to mount it to the back of the monitor if you want to. We need to remove this plate here. We do have Wi-Fi 7 on here as well. So I just need to remove this back plate. It's held in by four screws. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this so we can gain access to inside to have a look. So let me just quickly remove these screws. We can then remove the uh, bottom plate here so we can gain access to the motherboard area. Now, when I pulled this up, it was stuck down with the actual thermal pads here. And of course, that's now broken that Wi-Fi cable there, which is very, very tight and very small. There wasn't much room to wiggle there. So be warned if you are going to remove this. We do have a crucial P3 Plus drive on here. This is a Gen 4 PCI Express Gen 4 drive. You have your coin battery here for your CMOS and you have room for more expansion inside here on a smaller drive size here, which you can use. It does have crucial memory on here as well. This comes with 32 gigabytes of memory, which is upgradable to 64 gigabytes. And you can see the speeds there on the screen, DDR5 5600, which runs at 1.1 volts with a cache latency of 46. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the actual drive itself. I'm just going to quickly remove this so I can gain access to the Wi-Fi card there and take a look. So on here, we do have Wi-Fi 7. Unfortunately, I've just gone and broken that cable, which is very unfortunate. I'm so clumsy. I pulled on it, but it was so small, it was so tight, and it was molded down onto that thermal pad. When I pulled it, it's just literally snapped it. So if you are going to remove this, be ultra careful because that cable is quite tight and quite small. And you can see here, there's not much wiggle room here. And as I've pulled it up, it just snapped, and it's quite easy to snap. Replacement cable for those for about £3.50. Anyway, the Geekom GT1 Mega does have an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H processor, which has 16 cores and 22 threads, with an L3 cache of 24 megabytes, frequency 
which has a turbo clock right up to 5.1 gigahertz, TDP of 45 watts. The Intel Arc graphics, which support ray tracing and also XESS, also dual channel DDR5 5600 sodium memory, right up to 64 gigabytes on that one. M.2 2280 PCI Express 4.0, running at four times SSD with two terabytes of drive space there. Let's take a quick look at the drive itself. You can see it's got a two terabyte drive in here. NVMe PCI Express 4.0 and it's a times four speed. So pretty fast little drive for a mini PC. I'll give you the benchmarks now for the drive itself. So we have 5,045.82 on the reads and we also have writes of 4,149.40. So pretty decent for a mini PC. Let's take a look at the Cinebench R23. I can see we're getting some core power limit exceeded. And we're also getting the ring power limit exceeded as well, popping up on the screen and core uh, thermal throttling. But the score was 18,809. So, and the total uh, and the total core package temperature was 94 Celsius. So let's go ahead and run the single core test now and see what we get here. And the single core benchmark was 1,834, which isn't too bad at all. I also run the Geekbench 6 test and we also got single core score of 2,506 and a multi-core score of 13,985. The GPU score for Geekbench 6 was 36,900, which is pretty good for a mini PC. Let's take a look at the 4K streaming playback here. You can see we're getting really smooth playback on 4K. And there is just a couple of drop frames here, nothing too crazy, but you expect that when you're first starting the video. But again, this is going to be great for 4K movie playback and streaming. And if you do want to run a Plex server on this, this is going to be ideal. Let's play a 4K video file. This is Jellyfish 400 Mbps 4K Ultra HD HEVC. And this is a 4K file, 10 bit. And you can see super smooth playback, no problems at all. And this is quite a difficult file to play on some mini PCs. Let me just stop and start it here. And you can see it played that no problem at all. Pretty instant on playback. So pretty impressive. So taking a look at CPU Z here, you'll be able to see the actual CPU. It's the uh, Meteor Lake uh, 45 watts TDP. And you can see there the socket is 2049. And also the main board is their own default string of boards that they're using. And you can see also here under the memory, it will give you all the memory readouts here. Just going to go through here so you can see it and you'll be able to see what it actually is. So you can see all of the specifications are here on the screen. Now this does come with Intel Arc graphics on it, which is really impressive because it means you're going to be able to uh, play quite a lot of games on here, even AAA listed games at some lower resolutions. So let me just do a quick uh, stress test here on the CPU to check the actual temperatures here with uh, CPU Z. So you can see here on the CPU core package here, we're getting 81 Celsius and it's gonna go up and down as you can see 83 now. And again, most people are not gonna be pushing this to its maximum like this, unless you're playing AAA listed games or really highly intensive graphics. You can see 93 Celsius, 91 Celsius. Again, it is starting to get core power limit exceeded, and it's also getting the ring power limit exceeded, which I don't like to see on these little mini PCs. Some people say to see thermal throttling or ring power limit exceeded. All these are pretty normal to some people. I don't like to see it myself, and I have tested some mini PCs in the past where that has not been a problem. So it just means that some people seem to be able to make mini PCs that don't have this issue and some mini PCs do have this issue. It tends to be on the more higher end mini PCs like the uh, Ryzen 9s and the i9 or Ultra 9 uh, processors that start to get some of these issues. Now, as for gaming, I'm only going to be sticking to the retro games and stuff like that for this particular video. If you want to see a AAA listed game uh, test on this, then let me know in the comments section down below. But I don't think you should be buying a mini PC on the strength of playing AAA listed games on it because it's just really going to be difficult for a mini PC to actually do that. You can do it with uh, eGPUs and stuff like that or even, you know, some of the 
Oculink ports, which I'm going to make a video on to show you. But if you're pushing that mini PC to play AAA listed games, you may be a bit disappointed because you might have to turn down a lot of graphic settings and you may need to drop the resolution uh, on some games because of the intensity of that game. But it can be done on this mini PC. But you just have to choose which games and what settings that you're going to be playing at. So I want to make a dedicated video if I do do that because I can actually show you what settings I had and what resolution and things like that. So you can get a true idea of what this actually can do and what it can't do. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Check out the links in the video description. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.